This was the best chapter I've read thus far. After chapter 364, I don't think I've ever uttered those words. Almost five months have gone by since the end of volume 41, and it's safe to say the results here in the beginning of volume 42 with chapter 376 are pleasing. Not only pleasing, but refreshing due to the new setting and cast of characters that Guts and the band are now interacting with. Sila and the Kushans are two topics that I've genuinely been interested in and wished Miura would have invested more time into while he was still with us. And since their return to the main storyline at the end of Volume 41, things have gotten very interesting, especially due to the fact that we finally moved on to a new setting other than Elfhelm, Falconia, or just aimlessly exploring the sea. The Kushan lands are calling, so let's dive in and analyze what we've got on April 26. Load it up. Yo, yo. From the beginning of the chapter, things are in a very interesting state, as we come upon Guts' ethereal form standing in the middle of a strong current of odd. As he stands there confused, being blasted by waves, he notices something swiftly approaching him from behind, and the entity is revealed shortly to be Shirke. Now we know that Shirke has been now exploring in her ethereal form since chapter 373, the last time she was physically on Roderick's ship and left her body right before Salat's navy invaded, projecting out to explore the world tree deeper by tracing his branches or the dragon path. Now we finally see her active again in this realm and interacting with Guts' ethereal form, acting as a source of reassurance to Guts by grabbing his hand, seemingly pulling him away or grasping his finger while being whisked away from their current position. Presumably, back to her body, but we transition back to the physical world where the same hand that Shirke was pulling on is cuffed and chained to a wall, revealing that Guts' experience with Shirke has been a dreaming instance while imprisoned in a Kushan cell, which he then wakes from wondering what that was that he just experienced. I think what's most interesting about that moment is the hand that Shirke was grabbing in the ethereal upon transitioning back to the real world. We can see a faint aura surrounding his hand and forearm, which begs the question as to what is happening to Guts. Is it possible that he can now tap into the ethereal realm at will? Because he could only do so once he was taken over by the Berserker armor. I'm wondering, has the armor given him the ability over time, or did it happen in a moment in chapter 371 when the Beast of Darkness broke its restraints and we saw a naked Gus falling into the depths? Maybe, similar to the Dragon Slayer that now has the ability to affect the undead over time, Guts who's come into contact with ethereal beings like Slan, Skull Knight, and Femto on multiple occasions, has tapped into the ability to move between both realms unknowingly and due to residual contact with the God Hand members and Apostles, I guess we'll soon find out as the story progresses. Immediately after Guts wakes up in his cell, the scene transitions to Rickert calling on and questioning Salat for imprisoning Guts in a dungeon. In that instance, we get a beautiful overview of the Kushan coastal city landscape with dome-like buildings mirroring traditional Islamic and Indian architecture. As a discussion about Guts' imprisonment fires up between Rickard and Salat, Daiba interrupts, asking them to follow, leading them to the area that the band, Roderick's crew, and the remaining residents from Elfhelm are being held. Most importantly, this is the area that Shirke's body is being held and washed over. The gang is all here, but none other than Evelyr is more than worried because it seems to have been a few days since Shirke has been out of her body. Even Daiba takes a seat comfortably amongst Gedfrin and the older sages, which kinda hints that maybe a kinship among older mages has taken place. It also seems as if Daiba is conspiring to have the mages work under his wing as his subordinates because he recognizes the magical potential that they have in their midst. Roderick takes notice of Salat and tries to apologize as it seems they were not meant to be there because he says they were being led to the palace. Salat interrupts him to declare peace due to how they first encountered one another and going on to reveal that he was given word on what happened to them on Elfhelm. Then makes it known that they understand their pain of being displaced from their home, which is in reference to how Bakiraka were displaced after Kanishka's empire was dismantled by Griffith and the new band of the Falcon. As he looks over Shirke, Daiba taps his cane and interjects laughing as always. He goes ahead accounting how, when he was Ganishka's general, that Guts was the only person who ever rivaled him on the battlefield. Even with all the beasts at his disposal and looks over at the crew to say it's water under the bridge now. It's a very awkward moment as Magnifico shudders in terror, Ishijo looks ready for confrontation, Serpico scratches his head in embarrassment, and Farnese clutches her hat. This small moment as a surprise to Rickert to find out that Guts and Daiba battled at a point in the past. It's really funny how often Rickard is surprised to find out things after parting ways with Guts and Casca for so long. I wonder if he knows that Salat fought Guts and even murdered some of the original band of the Hawk members at this point too. And so, Daiba gets to the point and says that the mages are of interest to him, that they are well versed in the dark arts. 
by the dark arts, I wonder if that's how they refer to magic in Kushan society. I know that Daiba himself uses magic to manifest monsters and even chimera type creatures to use in battle when he was a general in Ganishka's army. Or maybe that's just his phrasing when referring to magic in general. Anywho, he asks Salat if he would allow them to be taken under his wing and Salat says for him to do as he likes. The concern is very evident in all the mages and witches faces as they wonder what will happen to them going forward. As Salat, Rickert and Daiba make their leave, only Roderick has the courage to take the opportunity to ask further what they meant by giving them over to Daiba. This is when Salat takes the time to explain to Roderick that now under Kushan occupancy means they will assimilate into the military and Daiba urges him that he owes them more of an explanation given who they are. Salat reluctantly agrees and tells the main crew to come along. As they move on to another area of the building, Puck pokes fun at Ishijo since he's been extremely tense since Isma disappeared but in the middle of their dialogue, Rickert interrupts to get Puck's attention, mentioning that he's glad to see him again, that they have not seen each other since in Goto's Crave but Puck stares back in silent confusion. Ishijo is surprised that someone else knows Puck and apologizes to Rickard for Puck's behavior and asks if he really does not remember Rickard. While he has their attention, Rickard takes the time to ask Casca's whereabouts and before he starts to ask further about Guts' condition, he sees the worry in Ishijo's face and puts two and two together, deducing that Griffith must have had something to do with the state of them both. From this interaction, my only question is if Puck actually doesn't remember Rickard, or is he playing coy? Because we know he has the ability to sense memories through people's energy. So he either doesn't want to give the bad news to Rickard, or maybe he's analyzing how he should move forward in interaction since he is now among the Kushan. Given any time that they came upon Kushan, they were as enemies. Whether it was when they met Ishijo and the Kushan scouts attacked Guts, or when they were making their way out of Vitanis and were in conflict with Daiba. Immediately after this interaction, Salat makes it very clear what is happening, exclaiming to the crew that the Kushan are gathering recruits in arms to go to war with Falconia. Understanding that, Griffith has the power to change the world as he sees fit, but doesn't understand why he spends his efforts suppressing demons that run rampant outside of Falconia and expanding his territory. Up to the point that now he has been given word that Falconia's vanguard has been spotted at the western borders of the Kushan Empire. He then deduces that Femto fears which lies beyond his reason, and thus why Elfhelm was destroyed and they are next on the hit list. Thus, without a moment to lose, they move to attack Femto aka the Falcon of Light. Silat has always been an intelligent and interesting character in the story. He is one of the very few characters that we readers have witnessed their gradual maturity from his naivete in the Golden Age to his growth in spurts of the conviction in Millennium Falcon arcs. I can say that now seeing him being a very decisive, thoughtful, and forward-thinking leader after all that he's been through up until now in the story is very refreshing to see. I can't wait to see how he handles confrontation with both Guts and Griffith going forward, allying with a former foe and then facing the one responsible for reshaping his purpose after Kanishka's demise. The amount of dialogue has been great, covering a lot in just 20 pages, and the art, I believe, has finally been tapping into how media likes to express during storytelling. I'm really looking forward to 377, and if it takes another 4 to 5 months hiatus, I'm all for it as long as we get fantastic results like this going forward. How did you all like chapter 376, and what were some pros and cons that you saw that I didn't? What are your expectations for chapter 377? Will it come out this month, or will it be another hiatus? Jot it all down in the comments section so we can get this dialogue started. Make sure to leave a like if you found this review and analysis to your liking, and subscribe to the channel for more berserk and video essay content coming down the pipeline. You know the vibes. It's Kaiser Cool Appreciate you.